Good morning and welcome to St. Bartholomew's Church. We're so glad to see all of you here this morning, those of you who are here with us, those of you who are joining us online. Our opening hymn is hymn 529. Son and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be his kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. 
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church, and because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our reading from the Old Testament today is from the book of Hosea. And before I begin, uh, a little bit of an introduction to Hosea. Hosea was a minor prophet from the northern kingdom of Israel. And in today's reading, he elaborates on God's concerns for that kingdom. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the balls and offering incense to the idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords and human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift up infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt and Assyria shall be their king because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities that consumes their oracle priests and devours because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning away from me. To the most high they call, but he does not raise them up at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adam? How can I treat you like Zebulun? My heart recoils within me and my compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fear staying, or I will not again destroy Ephraim. For I am God, no mortal, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. They shall go after the Lord, who roars like a lion, and when he roars, his children shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling like birds from Egypt and like doves from the land of Assyria, and I will return them to their homes, says the Lord. For the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 107, verses 1 through 9 and 43. We will read responsibly, dividing by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. 
Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Wandered into desert place and found them a place for the city where they might dwell. They were hungry and thirsty, and their spirits languished within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He put their feet on a straight path to go to a city where they might dwell. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Whoever is wise will ponder these things and consider well the mercies of the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The epistle today is from Paul's letter to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is in your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek or Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, what should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. So this has happened a few times this summer um, where we bump into another one of those passages from Luke and we always think of Luke as like the kinder, gentler gospel. We bump into a passage that we really don't like. We've done it before, right? We kind of learned that we really don't like the story of the Good Samaritan. We kind of learned that we don't really like the story of the prodigal son because they turn our expectations and our desires of what's fair on its ear. And today, here is Jesus telling us a parable about a success. Wouldn't you describe this guy as a success? He's a rich farmer, such that his storage no longer can contain what he is reaping. That's a success, isn't it? If you knew this person in real life, you'd say, this friend of mine, oh my gosh, he's the best farmer ever. Wouldn't you? Evidently, that's not exactly what Jesus has in mind. When Jesus thinks of one who is successful, or one who is faithful, or one who should be looked upon with some esteem and virtue. You fool. You fool. Tonight, your life is being demanded of you, and all of that stuff What's going to happen? There's a couple different kinds of ways to be greedy. And Jesus is just talking about one in this parable. And the problem with the version of greed that he takes on in this parable is it is the principal idol of American and probably Western culture. All the stuff we can acquire, all the stuff that we can hold on to, all of the stuff. And part of the problem is what does the stuff tell us about us? What does our capacity for attaining whatever it is we want, what does that tell us about us? It tells us we're smart. It tells us we're industrious. It tells us we're hardworking tells us all kinds of things that keep us from really looking at ourselves in the mirror. Another way to be greedy is rather than to seek to attain things, possessions, because life does not consist in the abundance of possessions, is trying to collect for ourselves the esteem of others trying to make ourselves look good so that Jill will like me, or so that Wesley Ann will be proud of me, 
or so Rob will admire me. And we do this in all kinds of sneaky ways. One of the sneaky ways that we do it is we tell ourselves and we tell others all of these silly little white lies. And most of the time, those silly little white lies are not like um, lies of commission, like you're actually saying something that's false. Most of the time, they're lies of omission. You're just kind of shaving a little bit of the truth off and not sharing it. You don't say things like, I really feel insecure. You don't say things like, you know, I've really been sad for a long time. You know, I'm lonely. I'm angry. I'm hurt. I'm scared. Every single day, every single day, all of us feel some measure of all of those. But I don't want you to think I'm weak, so I'm not going to tell you. I don't want you to think that I'm not brave, so I won't tell you. I don't want you thinking that I'm going to fall apart, so I won't tell you the truth about me. Because I want to collect your esteem. Because that tells me something about me. It may not be true what it tells me about me, but it tells me something about me. Another way to be greedy is to want power. It's to want to be able to control not just ourselves, but everyone in our environment. And this is a sneaky one, too, because sometimes we don't even realize we're doing it. We don't even realize the ways in which we try to manipulate one another. The ways in which we try to get so-and-so to do this. Because that's the outcome I want. Greed takes on all kinds of forms. And I'm going to give just a little quick Bible quiz. Um, I'm going to ask if you were listening closely when Brad was reading from Paul's letter to the church in Colossae. What does Paul call greed? Speak up, Wesley Ann. Idolatry. Idolatry. <laughs> Anyone want to give us, offer us a working definition of idolatry? Worshiping, Worshiping something. Worshiping something that's not God. Yeah. Making something God. That's not God. Making our stuff gods. Making ourselves gods. Making the power we want to attain the most important thing. Worshiping something that is not God. That's what we do a lot. It's what we get encouraged to do a lot. Just watch broadcast television. Actually, you don't even need to watch broadcast television to get inundated with advertising. You get told that you want things. You get told that you need things. Shoot, about 10 years ago, Volvo came out with an ad telling you that this car can save your soul. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Don't surprise me. We get told to be idolatrous over and over and over and over again. It's unavoidable. No wonder we fall for it. No wonder. But there is an alternative. And the scary thing, and maybe this is one of the reasons we don't like this passage, is Jesus doesn't explain what he means by it. But the alternative is to be rich toward God. And what would that look like? 
What would, instead of storing up treasure for one's self, what would it be to store up treasure for God, to be rich toward God? What kind of things would you do? What kind of gifts would you give? What of yourself would you share? What control would you let go of? What choice would you make for the sake of someone else? What would you sacrifice? Who would you choose to love? Who could you look upon and see the face of God? What does being rich toward God mean? My guess is if we take any of the portrait of Jesus that the Gospel of Luke offers us, or just the stories, the very, very challenging stories that Jesus tells us in the Gospel of Luke, we get a picture of generosity. We get a picture of compassion. We get a picture of abundance that's not ours. Abundance that is showered upon us, unearned, unmerited. We get a picture of sacrifice, giving oneself up. We get a picture of the ultimate enemy showing us what healing can be. We get a picture of a family where a wayward son is welcomed home, much to the objection of the son that never left. We get a picture of forgiveness. We get a picture of reconciliation. We get a picture of hope. So maybe being rich toward God is about generosity, passion, sacrifice, gift, abundance, love. Maybe that's the alternative to the idolatry that we all fall into so, so very often, every single day. Maybe being rich toward God is trusting the image of God in the person standing in front of you such that you can share yourself fully instead of being polite, instead of looking good, instead of being puffed up. Maybe being rich toward God is looking around the world in which we find ourselves and the lives in which we occupy with an eye for the divine, with with an eye for the beautiful. In a world that seems so fraught and so frightening, Maybe being rich toward God is actually having an eye that sees something else. I've had a hard time this summer preaching from Luke because I always thought that I really, really liked Luke and I'm really irritated with Luke this summer. (laughs) And you know what? That's a really good thing. It's a really good thing to read passages that you've read over and over and over again with a different eye. It's a good thing. It changes my mind. And I hope it changes your mind. Because I hope what we've done this a little bit this summer in talking about Luke is walk away from some of the Sunday school versions that we were always taught and let Luke pierce our souls a little bit. The way at the very beginning of the gospel, Anna says to Mary, 
holding the baby Jesus in a sword will pierce your soul too. Be changed by the gospel. Be rich toward God. In a world that encourages idolatry and fear, have an eye for the divine. If you would please stand and turning to page 358, join with me in affirming our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are form six, and they are found on page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For, for our families, families friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all, all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Susan and Jennifer, our bishops, for Mark, our bishop-elect, for Michael, our priest, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all, for all who serve God, God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, adding either silently or aloud your personal prayers and remembering those on our prayer list. For the victims of the floods in Kentucky and West Virginia and Western Virginia. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy and strength. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. You may add your own thanksgivings, either silently or aloud. Thank you. Support. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise, praise your name, name forever and ever. ever. Pray for all who have died that may, they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Put their, their trust, trust in you. you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy, mercy on us, us most merciful, merciful Father, 
In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. Please greet one another in the name of the Lord. Peace, 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 peace over there. <laughs> Lots of pieces. Pieces part. I love it when you learn. I, like, I didn't even have to say you don't need my permission to sit down when you've concluded your greetings today. I, di I didn't even have to mention. I love it when we learn. That's great. Um, good morning and welcome to St. Bartholomew's again. Um, to those of you who are here, those of you who are joining us online, just um, a few things and there are, there are normal things. There's one thing out of the ordinary. Um, the normal things are the Kevin and Kathy Dyer announcement, which is please bring in your can tabs. There's two containers um, right by the front doors in the narthex. Um, we collect these for Ronald McDonald House. It's one of the principal ways that they raise money um, for their guests. Um, as you can see in front of me, there's a whole bunch of food. We are always collecting food for um, the food pantry at Lamb's Basket. Um, there's boxes right, <laughs> right by the front doors in the narthex. Um, please do continue to be generous and thank you for your generosity this month. And what I know is this isn't all of this because I was here at the office and Ron and Wesley Ann came and I think you already loaded some things into your car that it's all the foods here. Okay. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so y'all were really generous. Thank you so much. Um, keep it up. Uh, the third announcement is uh, the Cindy announcement, which is there's still stew in the freezer here. Um, you can come by any time during the week, uh, write an $11 check, grab a quart of stew, give it to a neighbor, tell them your friends at St. Bartholomew's love you. It's the easiest form of evangelism ever, um, and, they'll, and they'll thank you for it. Um, and then finally is my normal announcement, which is so, uh, Monday evenings at 6.30 online on Zoom. Um, we have our lectionary-based Bible study. What lectionary-based means is we read the lessons for the coming Sunday. Um, we do often a uh, bird walk away from them, which is a good thing because scripture does that to you. It piques your curiosity, it piques your imagination, um, and so we run off on tangents, and that's a good thing to do. Um, the announcement that is out of the ordinary is Sunday, August 14th, uh, after church, We'll take a minute to catch our breath, but after church, we will, um, anybody who wants to or has been or is serving in any kind of liturgical leadership role, um, I would like to have us all gather together just to talk through a few things. What we're hoping to do is um, the Sunday after Labor Day, which is September 11th, we're hoping to reintroduce some roles um, into our worship that have been, um, that we have, set aside during the pandemic. So we would like to have a crucifer lead a procession. We would like to have a vested Eucharistic minister. We would like to have um, a greeter. Um, there's a new, uh, there's a whole new job, which is like being the co-host for Zoom here. And we're gonna rearrange this whole place. So, you know, that'll be a little tech job sitting over in the corner, helping Rick um, deal with us on Zoom um, and our hybrid worship. Um, if you read, if you um, do intercessions, uh, whatever, I would like for y'all to join me so we can just talk through how we're going to reintroduce um, these different pieces um, in our worship. And if you've never done any of those things before, but you would like to do those things, um, please be in touch with me and let me know. Um, the theological underpinning is this space doesn't belong to the priest. It's not my domain. Um, it's God's domain. And if it's God's domain, everybody belongs. Everybody belongs. 
And so it's really important for you to see one another um, serving one another in such a way. Um, and so I really do encourage you, it, even if you've never done it before, um, to please do join us. Um, it's important. It's important for our worship life. Um, that's all I have um, at this point. Does anyone have anything else for the good of the cause? I'm, I'm going to bless those after, after church at the end, before dismissal. Anything else? If not, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. with you and also, and also with, with you. you lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give him thanks and praise it is right a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you father almighty creator of heaven and earth through jesus christ our lord who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we as forgive those, those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. of heaven. This is a prayer of spiritual communion, prayed in solidarity with those who are joining us online. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you together with all your faithful people gathered around every <laughs> altar of your church, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Christ is risen. Body Christ is risen. Our post-communion prayer is found on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacraments of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for moving us with compassion, moving us to generosity for continually reminding us of the needs of those in the world about us. Grant that we may continue to respond to your call. And may this food nourish not just the bodies, but the souls of those who receive it, that they may find some measure of comfort in the gifts that we offer. Amen. 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 Life is short. And we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love and make haste to do kindness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn is hymn 533. <clears throat> serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.